Hello, my dear students. Welcome to your very own Faculty Driven Institute Resultant. Hope you guys are fine. So, guys, as you have already seen the thumbnail, it might be possible you are preparing for GATE, you are preparing for ESC, RRBJ. So, you are confused that which exam should I prepare for, which is the exam should I focus on. So, let's have a look and let's get rid of all your doubts here. Okay, so let's start quickly. First of all, before we start the session, I welcome you all again in your very own Faculty Driven Institute Resultant. Next, talking about guys, if you are new and if you haven't subscribed to our channel, kindly do, show, do so. Share the session and like it also. Now, talking about guys, if you are new and if you don't know about me, then you can go through my profile as well. And now talking about that, first let us talk about GATE. Because if you are having a query that which exam should I focus, what exam I should be focusing 100% and if I am preparing for GATE, shall I give other examination? So, let's have a talk on this. Okay, if you talk about GATE, it is a 100 marks paper, 3 hours, 65 portions are there. 30 questions of 1 marks and 35 portions of 2 marks which makes total 100 marks. Here you have multiple choice questions in which one option will be correct. Multiple select questions in which more than one options are correct and the last one is your numerical answer type question. Okay, next talking about here you will be having 72% technical, 15% is your aptitude and 13% is your mathematics. Apart from that, if I talk about further, if I talk about further, you will be seeing what? You will be seeing that in math aptitude, you will be getting general aptitude and uh, basically general English also. So, 5 portions of 1 marks and 10 portions of 2 marks. So, that will be uh, 5 portions of 1 marks and 5 portions of 2 marks. So, that will be making total 15 portions. So, that, that is 15% aptitude out of 100%. Okay. Now coming next is 13 percent that is 13 marks is for your mathematics and 72 marks comprises of your technical. Now talking about next is that why you should go for gate examination like if you are targeting for gate you are leaving RRBJ, you are leaving ESC and you are focusing only on gate examination. So why gate? See first option is you can go for PSU job, ONGC is there, PGCIL is there, NTPC is there, GAIL is there, there are so many PSUs, Coal India is there. Uh, then you have uh, this uh, DMRC is there. Okay, so there are a uh, lot of vacancies are on the loop coming from the PSU sale. So uh, this gives you an opportunity like if you have got a good gate scorecard, obviously you can land into a PSU job. Second is if you are a person who is much into research work and all, then you can go for MTech. Okay, so MTech you can get it into the IITs, esteemed IITs and ISCs for research work. Next, you can go for PhD as well. You have a dual degree program also. I'll write it here. You have dual degree program also by the help of which you can enroll and you can get into, you can do what? You can do both uh, MTech plus PhD. Okay, this will save uh, one to two years also if you complete separately MTech and then PhD. Talking about next that if you give GATE examinations and the core companies, like if you are preparing for GATE, so obviously you will be studying the technical subjects. So when campus placements come, you don't have to study extra things and all because your concepts, your data are very, very clear. So definitely it will provide you a helping hand in your campus placements. Apart from that, the separate institutes, the separate organizations, which organize the paper like BARC, ISRO or DRDO. So definitely if you have studied for GATE, this will be a helping hand again, a boon to you that if you are preparing for BARC, ISRO or DRDO. So this is like if anything of you is your target is PSU, MTech, PhD, campus placement or BARC, ISRO, DRDO, then you should focus on GATE examination only rather than going for ESU or RRBJ. So if you have a doubt, I cleared one of your doubts. Next coming further is like MTech if you do, you can get into placement. After MTech you can go for PhD or simultaneously you can prepare for engineering services examinations or civil services examination. Okay, now if you want to know that what are the cutoffs and marks and the toppers marks. So here is the qualifying marks over the years for various branches and what is the all India one marks that has also been shown to you for 23, 22. Okay, similarly you can check it out for 2024 also. This I have shown you for only civil engineering that uh, how many candidates appeared like this year 1,8136 candidates registered. Out of that 85,869 
gave the paper okay cut off marks is 28.3 for general obc it is 25.4 and scst and pwd, uh, PWD it is 18.8 .8. okay so you guys can check it out that how many students register lacks thousands are the ones who appeared and even more than you can say handful of students are there who get a good mark so here you guys can check it out that what is the level of competition just by seeing these data or this data don't get afraid okay because your competition is with the top 1000 2000 people only who have sincerely started the preparation and did it till the end okay so that is the thing you have to keep it mind now next coming further is that we talk about ESE you know that ESE paper is basically here ESE paper if I talk it about that firstly it is a three stage paper first is your prelim stage then is your main stage and then is your interview stage okay if you talk about prelim stage so you'll be having two papers one paper will be regarding your general aptitude and your 10 topics okay so that will be a 200 marks paper then after that you will be having technical paper of 300 marks this will be your technical paper okay then coming about main so you will be having 300 300 marks to conventional paper in which you have to write it so prelims paper is completely objective the moment you clear prelims you will go for the mains examination which is 300 marks paper conventional uh, three, 300 marks paper one paper two will be there after that interview will be there so this comprises of what this comprises of your prelims mains prelims you clear it then you go for mains then for interview now if you want to know the number of candidates so you guys can check it out over the years from nine, 2019 20 21 how many number of candidates has been there okay next coming further is that why we should choose ese i told you that why you should choose gate i gave you the option now comes the question why you should go for ESE. Firstly, work-life balance will be there. Here, it's not like private companies that you have to be there till 9 p.m., 11 p.m., no. So, like, if you go, you have, like, 8, 9 hours of duty. So, you have proper, you can give time to your, obviously, future, you'll be getting married. You'll give to your time to your wife or husband and children. So, definitely, you have that uh, flexibility of work-life balance, which you see in private sector. They are, like, I'm not, uh, they give their uh, time to their families only on weekends. What about the weekdays? No, because they are busy, they are working around the clock. This doesn't happen if you are qualified ESE. Okay, next is obviously power. Obviously, if you compare to private sectors, the one of software companies, you'll have slightly lesser salary, but the power, prestige, not only in the workplace, but in the society which you'll be having, that will be much more. So that is the one thing. Salary also, you, you get a quite a, you are in grade one. So you'll get a quite a handsome salary you'll be getting. You'll be a gazetted officer. So you, apart from the salary, you'll be getting perks and benefits of dearness allowance, gratuity. Uh, then you'll be having HRA, travel announces, canteen facilities, medical insurance uh, for your uh, for your this one children. Uh, the uh, school facilities, schools basically they reimburse a certain amount of money. So there is a lot of you can say facilities apart from your salary which is provided. Then promotions see if you talk about central government it is fixed after three years your promotion has to be there so it will be there so as early you get into this esc there are chances that by the time you retire you will become a chief engineer or any other bigger post okay so as soon as early as you get into this one your chances of reaching to the top level by the end you retire increases so this is also one of the things next if i talk about future aspects future aspects yes obviously power prestige money and uh, you can say future growth chances sometimes there are chances that you can uh, be uh, appointed in a cabinet secretariat and all those things also so that is also one of the advantages which you get if you qualify es okay now over the years if you want to see how many students applied appeared qualified for prelims interviews what were the total number of seats you guys can check it out and here also you guys can check out the seats of ese 2022 23 and 23 initially it was 145 then uh, revised seats uh, came okay so here it's given to you if you guys want to see that how many number of seats have been there over the years okay now next coming further next coming further and esc cutoff 2022 for civil engineering like uh, 233 was there see out of people think that it is tough see 500 marks paper was their prelims paper and the cutoff was 233 for general category okay this is for prelims 
Okay. Similarly, for OBC, it is 233 SCST. It's given. Mains paper was how much? 600 marks out of that 551 was the one. So, total one is 756 for general. And for others, you guys can check it out. Okay, similarly for other years also you guys can check out the cutoff for various years for civil engineering and if you are from mechanical engineering also you guys can check it out. The cutoff over the years. Electrical engineering, uh, EC, I have mentioned here, here, you guys can check it out if you want. So again, as I told you, prelims, mains, paper 2, what is there that's being shown to you. 23, I have taken a separate data and shown it to you here. 22, uh, here shown for other branches. And uh, 21 and 22 have shown for civil engineering already. Okay, so for others one I uh, have already shown, but 2023 I have shown for civil. This one is the one. So general EWS, OBC, SC, ST, how many vacancies, bifurcations are there? Total 211 posts were there. Okay, out of that uh, vacancies, uh, they have shown it to you everything. Uh, that uh, minimum qualifying marks was how much there in prelims. 218 out of 500 can you imagine not even 50 percent is the qualifying marks and that too for general category out of this minimum qualifying marks written examinations and out of 1100 it is showing you that if this is the marks which they are getting and out of 1300 783 okay this is the cutoff marks okay so last candidate that means the cutoff marks so you guys can check it out 1300 uh, marks paper and out of that how much 200 marks interview is there 500 marks paper one prelims is there 600 marks means paper is there. That makes 1100 marks. And 200 marks interview is there. So total out of 1300, the marks, the cutoff marks of the general category is how much? 783. Okay. Next coming further, next coming further is talking about RRBJ. RRBJ, it happens in two stages, CBT1, CBT2, technical, your uh, physics, bio, everything will be there, okay, aptitude portion. So, here, uh, guys, obviously, here zones are there, here the post and all, it's depending upon the zones, the cutoff will depend upon the zones, depending upon the vacancies. So, if you guys can check it out, RRBJ, uh, it came in 2019 with a heavy vacancy, It before that it came in 2015 and now it is coming in 2024, okay. So, here if I talk it about RRB, JE, previous year's cutoff for Ahmedabad, Ajmer, Allahabad, everything has been shown to you. Okay, so you guys can check it out and I'll advise you that where the number of vacancies are more. Kindly, when the notification will be properly released, kindly do, you basically fill your this post. From that place, don't be constrained like uh, you are filling it from your state and all. Because afterwards, this is a central government. You can go for mutual transfer and eventually you will get transfer. Okay, but let us suppose in your state or your place, the vacancy is less. And you filled it from that place, the cutoff will go very high. Comparative to other city, if you would have other state, if you would have filled, the vacancies were more. Okay, and the cutoff was uh, basically lesser. So that is the thing if I talk it about. Uh, if possible check it out the list and apply if you're flexible with working in any states across the country okay similarly you guys can check out the cutoff marks of 2019 for other states as well and you guys can check it out for 2015 also okay now <clears throat> i told you that if you are doing it what are the opportunities if you are doing esc what are the opportunities if you talk about rrb je so you will be appointed as junior engineer okay second option <coughs> excuse me this is a central government job okay so yeah here also promotion salaries will be as per the uh, seventh pay commission and all that will be there for sure and you will be getting uh, perks and benefits also and what else will be getting is you will be getting promotions after a certain fixed interval of time so that's saying like after three years you should get promoted but it is happening after five years seven years no it's not like a private job it is like it's a proper central government job so you will be getting the promotions in a fixed interval of time Okay, however, salary is lesser as you get it in PSUs or you get it in ESC. Power is comparatively lesser as compared to ESC. But yeah, this is also one of the jobs which you can opt for if you are targeting like I can't go for gate or ESC, ma'am. That's not, uh, that's beyond my uh, capacity. Then of course, you can go for RRBJ also. The level is comparatively less, but yeah, lacks of students give. So the competition is high. Okay, so I told you the pros and cons of each and everything based on that you can decide which exam you should prepare for depending upon your potential. Okay, so I hope you like the session and we'll meet you in the next session. Till then, take care of yourself. Bye-bye and study hard. Thank you, everyone.